All right, everybody, welcome back to another video. So in today's video, I'm gonna be doing a little bit of preventative maintenance, my 2010 Honda Ridgeline. This applies to all generation run Ridgelines from 06 to 14. What I'm going to show you today is how about $1 worth of 3 8 inch transmission hose can potentially save the transmission on your Ridgeline, save you a big headache, prevent a catastrophe. All right, so if you own a Ridgeline, uh, hopefully this never happens to you, but a fairly, I guess we'll call it fairly common, not really, uh, problem on Hondas with the 3.5 liter J-Series engine, so like Pilots, Ridgelines, is something called the Strawberry Milkshake of Death. Now hopefully you aren't here watching this video because this happened to you, because if it's already happened, you're in a bad position. This video is more geared towards how to prevent that from happening. So what happens is inside of the radiator, which we all know is right here, is where your coolant from the engine flows. And that's what cools the coolant down before it puts it back into the engine. Well, Honda also built a transmission cooler into the bottom of the radiator. So the transmission cooler inside of the radiator isn't so much just a cooler, it's a cooler and a heater. How it works is, on a really cold day, it can serve to heat the transmission fluid up to the temperature of the coolant. The thought process behind this is that the warmer transmission fluid temperature yields better gas mileage. So Honda has to balance gas mileage versus, versus longevity of parts, and all this goes into the design when they're engineering this. If we look down here behind the bumper, you can probably see it. That is a external transmission cooler. This auxiliary cooler that is on the outside is more than enough to keep the transmission cool in this vehicle. So I've got this little graph here to illustrate exactly what happens. So your transmission fluid leaves the transmission warm and it comes up here to this external cooler first. It goes through the cooler, cools down, then goes down into the radiator and warms up. They try to reheat it before sending it back to the transmission. The problem with this is, is this cooler that runs inside of the bottom of the radiator can corrode over time. And you can see corrosion on the fittings where it goes into the bottom of the radiator if you look closely. It's kind of hard to see from up here. We're gonna take a look when we get down there. It's a good sign that you could be approaching failure. And when this internal cooler ruptures, transmission fluid is able to mix with coolant and vice versa. And it makes a strawberry milkshake colored substance. And usually what happens is your coolant overflow will overfill because transmission fluid will get pumped into the coolant system if you're lucky. If you're not lucky, it'll go the other way and cool it will get pumped in the transmission and you got a 90% chance if you don't stop right away of needing a new transmission. So it's really a poor design. This is a much more common on the 2006, 2008 Ridgeline, 2009 and up. They did change the radiator slightly, although they still are susceptible to this type of issue. So all we're going to do is we're going to completely bypass the radiator cooler. You may say to yourself, well, that doesn't sound like a good idea. Well, you have to understand that the engineers at Honda, they have to strike a balance between fuel economy and longevity, okay? So any mechanic will tell you, never heard of a transmission failing from the fluid being too cool, but you can destroy a transmission in seconds when the fluid's too hot. So this is actually a very simple process. If we look straight down here, you can see there are two lines. The two lines that you can see are coming from the transmission over here. If you look over here, you can see the two lines going into the cooler. If you follow them down, one of the lines that came out of the transmission cooler that's in front of the grill goes straight back into the transmission. And the other one comes into that basically that T down there. All we need to do to completely bypass the radiator cooler is to connect those two rubber hoses to each other 
instead of to the two hard metal lines that are down there. All right, so to get at the transmission lines, we got to remove some Honda, you know, plastic clips. So there's one up here in the wheel well. There's one down under the side here, and there's another one. So there's three total over here. And if we climb underneath, there are a couple 10 millimeter bolts and more plastic clips. So just remove all these. You can see we can pry all this plastic down and then the transmission lines we're trying to get at will be completely accessible from underneath. Okay, so here's what we're dealing with. Here's that connection from underneath that I was talking about. So we basically just need to connect these two hoses so we can take this hose off or it comes out of the transmission and run a new hose up to the cooler itself. All right, so to give myself a little more room, I removed the battery and the battery tray. My battery is missing the hold down. There's supposed to be a, a hold down. It wasn't there, but as you can see, now we have tons of room to reach our cooler lines. We can actually see what's going on in here. So again, I'm gonna just replace this back hose here that runs down all the way to the transmission. Well, it runs to the cooler, but it's going to run all the way to the transmission. What I'm doing is this hose right here that runs from the cooler to the other cooler. We're going to eliminate that. And we're going to run from here directly into this other port of the transmission. Let's see if I can get to this line. I just need to grab a hold of the hose and twist it around a bit. Just gotta be careful. These you don't want to bend these lines and we're just cracking it the cores. There we go. I do have a pan under here to catch any fluid loss because there will be some that drains out. All right, so now I need to go underneath and get it off where it connects to the transmission. transmission fluid that's just coming out of the cooler. All right, you can see from above. So we've got this rear line connected on the right-hand side here. And it runs down and we're gonna disconnect it from the other side of that hose. And then what I think I'll do just to make this simple, easy, and completely free, is I'm just gonna take that other hose that we just connected right where it comes out of the transmission. I'm gonna loop it back around and stick it onto the other cooler line. So basically, it will just be a hose loop, just connecting those two things. That way, no residual fluid drains out of there. You could also put some, uh, you know, just vacuum line caps or something on there. Whatever we have that works. Like I said, I'm just gonna loop this hose around and cap it off. All right, so you can see I've got my loop. So I just took the that hose that was on there and just looped it around. And this will be good because in the future, let's say this does fail. I would assume this probably won't hold the pressure of a failed radiator, but it probably won't blow either. So you'll just start to get a drip from here of radiator coolant, I would imagine. And you'll know that there's a problem. So I kind of like this solution. I also took air and I blew out the cooler just to get all the transmission fluid that I could easily out with some compressed air. That way there isn't just old transmission fluid just sitting inside of there. Yeah, looks like it's gonna be three eighths inch hose that we're gonna be using. So now all I need to do is make myself a line from running from up there to down here. And I think I'll start at the top. All right, so now we're just going to connect a hose to this line that we took off here and just run it right down to that uh, spot on the transmission and we'll secure it with a couple worm clamps and I'll snap it right into that plastic retainer that's down here that was holding the hose. All right, so there's the top of the hose. Stainless worm clamp on there. 
All right, so here we are underneath. Here's the hose just brought down from the top. And there's the fitting where we need to put it. So we'll just cut it to length. I just need to take a little bit off. We'll get another clamp and we will get it installed on the outlet of the transmission here. All right, so there it is. Total price, maybe a dollar in the hose. So we have completely bypassed the radiator portion of the transmission cooler. Now we're just using the auxiliary transmission cooler in the front of the radiator, which is more than enough to keep the transmission cool. If you do a ton of towing, you might want to keep an eye on the temperatures, but again, more than enough. The thing can only do 5,000 pounds. So the last thing you want to do is go ahead and put your battery back in. Go ahead and start the vehicle. Make sure there's no leaks. We barely lost any transmission fluid. So, and the fluid we did lose was in, from the cooler that was uh, in the uh, radiator, which we're bypassing anyway. So we shouldn't need to add any. You can run it though and top it off if need be. All right, so again, very simple, very easy uh, preventative maintenance to protect the longevity of your ridge line, especially the transmission. Uh, you'll If you search for this type of information on the internet, you're gonna find a lot of discussion on the forums uh, if you notice in a, lot, in a lot of the Honda Ridgeline forums, you have a lot of people who are owners and nothing against them, but they actually have no idea what they're talking about and they give bad advice all the time. So this is a very easy, quick, simple uh, fix and takes you about under an hour in your own garage with simple tools. Just take your time. Be careful. The hardest part is just getting the plastic off the bottom. All right, so if you have any questions, you can leave them in the comments section below. Again, I needed like under two feet of 3 8 inch hose. That's all you need. So be sure to like the video, subscribe for more, and until next time, we'll see you later.